Hey, everybody. Welcome to Ask the Anabolic Doc, starring Dr. Thomas O'Connor. He is the pioneer of a brand new branch of medicine for men called testosteroneology. If you want to find out all about that, which you should, go to testosteroneology.com. Take the word testosterone, take the E off the end, put O-L-O-G-Y and a dot com, and you're there, guys. He's also the author of America on Steroids, A Time to Heal, available on that site as well as Amazon.com. And now, presumably in Hartford, Connecticut, and not Florida, please welcome Dr. Thomas O'Connor. We're in Florida, Ron. I'm in Florida. I'm in Florida. Oh, okay, that's why you don't have your backdrop. Are you going to show me some palm trees? Oh, no, okay. but it's raining here. It's weird down here in Fort Lauderdale, but it's beautiful, though. Yeah, okay. We had 45 degrees up here in New England. It's not that bad. Ooh. We had 73 in Boston last week, you know. Nice. And then yesterday morning, it was 10 degrees. These things happen. We're not going to okay. start talking about global warming, Ron, though. It's disappointing, you know, but no. It's an inconvenient truth. That's why uh, they made the movie. It's scary, man. Anyway. I don't want to think about that. So we got a great topic. I stole a great topic from you. But this is something that's been coming up over and over again in, in a lot of our discussions. People want to know, can I use DECA, DECA Durabolin, Androlone Decanoate, for my TRT? So you did a whole video on DECA only uh, for, for that purpose. For I shouldn't say TRT because in this case it would be HRT. TRT yeah. is testosterone replacement yeah. therapy. Don't, don't get it twisted, guys, like I usually do. Uh, so this was a video that Dr. O'Connor did last week on his channel on YouTube, Anabolic Doc. Check that out. Very, very comprehensive, annotated, time codes, legends, all that. Um, but the most interesting part about it was a case study uh, on, a, on a gentleman that you – he was a patient of yours, right? Oh, yeah. So this was very, very fascinating because I've never really – I've never really seen any labs or anything on it. It's just anecdotal. I've never seen any – anything in this in depth about somebody. So this is a gentleman who, uh, he's 37 years old. He's been using steroids since he was 13 or 14. I can't believe it. Uh, if I was his dad, I would have kicked his ass. I'll tell you that. Uh, so he's been on 300 milligrams of DECA per week. That's what he uses for hormone replacement therapy. He alternates that from time to time. He's take, he goes off of the DECA and switches it out for equipoise. Um, and he's also using growth hormone, which you said in the video, it's kind of, it's not negligible. doesn't really have any impact on what we're talking about here. So, uh, this was, uh, this was great. You've done labs on this gentleman and, uh, total testosterone was the lowest you have ever measured in a patient. Is that right? It is true. Okay, guys. So the normal range for testosterone is 250 or 300 to about a thousand. That's, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. He was. 3.9, 3.9. Wow. See, I could yeah. bite off a piece of my thumbnail. It would have more testosterone than that in it right True. now. But crazy part was his free testosterone. So the, the normal range for free testosterone is 8.7 to 25. He's over that. He's 47.9. He's almost twice the higher end range of a of free test. Crazy. Estradiol was... Uh, a little low. It's uh, 8 to 35 is a reference range. He was 6.0. Sex hormone binding globulin. Uh, he was a little low there. 16.5 to 55.9 is a reference range. He was 5.1. His prolactin was in range at 9.8. PSA was low at 0.5 NGML. Uh, he's had extensive fertility treatments. Uh, turns out he was able to maintain fertility with HMG. He does have high red blood cell counts. Doesn't use any other steroids. Um, but wow, this was, uh, this was insane because we've, we've always thought that DECA by itself would have a lot of negative side effects. And we've argued, we've heard arguments from people in your comment section of your videos saying you're full of it, doc, you don't, you're, you're a quack. Uh, I've used DECA only in this and that, but you know, you, you actually also, you propose an interesting theory as to why this gentleman might have such high free testosterone because it doesn't make sense. And I'm obviously not a medical professional. So you believe uh, somehow there's some metabolite in this gentleman or in DECA that must be converting to free testosterone because there are some men who are able to live on DECA like this and have no ill effects. And they're, and they're still, you know, this gentleman, how, how, you know, you always ask this, how does he feel? Does he feel fine? He feels great. Hmm. He feels yeah. great for, and he does go back and forth with the equipoise, but he doesn't switch it up at every six months or three months. So, and when he's on the DECA for his period that he's on DECA, 
he feels better on that than he does with the EQ. And it, it's a, could be a whole other video. I should check his labs and what about equipoise. Mm -hmm. But with this said, though, so the metabolite, I, I've since I've made the video, I've had so many guys email and the comments and even biologic. I got some great endocrine. You know, there's an endocrine fellow that I know and I'm working with who is a very smart man. And he said he tried, he put his head through the screws, you know, and he said here he came up with liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy that it's inaccurate. It's not it's not really accurate. It's DHN diet. This is for you all you guys. This is all for the bro science guys. Mm -hmm. Dihydronandrolone, which everyone knows it's going to be converting to, but only in tissues that have that enzyme. Hmm. So it doesn't, that's why in skeletal muscle, it, it, there's, it's not, it's not in skeletal muscle. Hmm. So it, 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 it doesn't, it's that, that's not converting to a, that's a weaker androgen, DHN. Everyone, let me just get off off my chest here. Yeah. So DHN, but if you have a lot of it, and if it's maybe somehow converting over to free testosterone, or the machine may be picking up DHN is free testosterone, we're done. But if, it, if it's really DHN, and that's stimulating his brain, he has great libido. So deca, the truth is this, there is, there are men that, that do, that live, I mean, I surrender, Ron, we have to surrender to this, DECA only guys, and I don't, I don't know, Lee Priest and all the, you know, it's all over the thing, you see the names and, you know, and pro Robbie Robinson, all these guys in the back in the old day, they, they supposedly lived on DECA only, and they supposedly, okay, the side effects of the, we're going to go over all this, but mm. the, the, the most important thing is how can a man live on DECA by itself and not get DECA dick? and actually feel great on it, I really don't know. And is it for every man? If you talk to a lot of guys, a lot of, you know, guys come in, they don't come in to bullshit me. They're like, Doc, that's bullshit. I had full-blown deck of dick. And then you start talking about the com the combinations of how much testosterone you need to take with DECA to, to feel good. And then you you can get all these side effects. I don't know. No one knows. This is actually going to be a really good video. No one knows this stuff. Everyone has these really harsh opinions, but there's the scientists don't, I have no idea. Well, let me ask you this. You know, you, you're nine to five every day. You see patients and you prescribe them testosterone for their hormone replacement therapy called yep. TRT. Uh, you know, ethically, you can't do, you can't prescribe DECA for that purpose. Uh, but if you, I, I if guess you I could, could, would I you? I, I, I could, but I just don't. And I'm just not going to today. Maybe in five years when there was, I don't want to, I, I just don't want to lose my license. So wh why would I do that? You know? Right. But I'm saying, you know, there's, I guess the question a lot of people clicking on this video want to know is, could I do this? Do you believe this gentleman is an anomaly or do you think? I think he, I think he is. I, I think, I think he is. First of all, I wish we had studies on this and that's why I'm working on studies. We need open, legitimate registries and studies and um, that's it. So, and we're working on it. So, because here's a guy that's walking around, maybe it's 10% of men, 10% of men across the board that can use decadrobal and will have a positive experience. 90% don't. Maybe it's 1%. Maybe it's hmm. 3%. Maybe Lee Priest is one of 3%. I mean, come on, guys. This is all guessing in the wind. It's complete guessing and just there's so much emotional support and the anger behind it and the, you're a dick, you're a, you're a, I, mean, I, I want, know. <laughs> you, you always solicit comments you know, in your videos. You always want to hear. So now, you know, that's what you get. But uh, I, I just want to read a couple of the comments that were posted on your video, on your video uh, on Anabolic Doc channel. So a gentleman named Tyler Schuler posted, first of all, thanks, Anabolic Doc, for bringing this out of the shadows. Most of us feel comfortable. I mean, he probably meant to say uncomfortable opening up about this. I've used AAS since I was 16 on and off. I'm 33. I've used DECA on and off. Here's what I can tell you from my sole personal experience. DECA is an amazing agent, even on a low dose. 125 milligrams weekly will do absolute wonders for your joints. I've been an athlete most of my life, football, powerlifting, gym. Plus, I grew up working on farms, which is not good on your body. So in that time, I have bulging discs, ankle injury, ligaments, several damage, general wear and tear. I feel this agent is very helpful with general sense of well-being. Ligaments have amazing relief. Muscle pumps way better in the gym, probably because the red blood cells are so high to the point where you simply can't move your arm. Yeah. It's a retro, retrocytosis, is that what you call it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Muscle pumps great. Uh, let's see. A few minutes. There's so much blood in his arms from barbell curls. I've never ran deck on its own, but even with 125 milligrams test decanate and 125 mg decadurabalin yields amazing results physically. I have never had decadic. What has happened to me is around after four months of cruising, it takes me longer to climax, probably because my prolactin was higher, but that's kind of a benefit depending on your circumstances, which you guys should study that more for men with premature ejaculation. Probably would benefit them. Wow. But is that that's on your list of studies coming up? Okay. Uh, but I have to give blood at least three times a year on it. Oh, that was another one of your videos, excessive phlebot phlebotomy. Uh, or I just don't feel right. I may use it once every 18 to 24 months for about three to four months. It seems after discontinued use, it stays with you for a long time, like six months after usage where you start feeling aches and pains. Now I'm just on Sustanon, 250 milligrams weekly. My blood levels are fine. Everything's in the normal range. My test level is around 900-ish. Free test levels are normal, higher range, but I cycle proviron, so that makes sense. My sperm was low for a bit, but I got off testosterone for one year to bring my sperm level back to normal range. It's normal, higher range now. I took Clomid and got me good to go. Any more questions, feel free to ask. I'm very pro-science and education on the subject. Thanks, Anabolic Doc. Wow. That's one man's story. Uh, I mean, one, give, me, give me one more. A uh, guy named says, more plates, more dates. <laughs> if only that were true. <laughs> uh, it says, uh, he, so here's what he says about the free tea, uh, his theory, his theory on your theory. Get equilibrium dialysis or equilibrium ultrafiltration free tea, and his free tea will show it's actually in the toilet. The problem is the assay you're ordering to test his free tea is inaccurate. I've posted articles and videos detailing this in the past using my own blood work. I'll be posting a more elaborate breakdown soon as well with a comprehensive panel on 100 milligrams nandrolone phenylpropionate per week with exogenous estradiol. Does that make sense to you? Here's the thing. He's right. And that's as I told you, my fellow, the endocrine guys, like they came back with this. So I think that's right. But here's what stickles. Here's what's wrong about it. Mm. Why does he feel so good then if his free tea's in the tank? Why doesn't he have decadic? So it's got to be, it's some metabolite. That, that is doing two things. It's supplanting his brain. It's hitting, it's supplanting testosterone in his brain. And he feels really good because it's a, it's a, it's an androgen and it's, it's stimulating the receptors in his brain, the limbic, the, the wellness, you know, the, the animal brain. So he feels horny, he feels fine and he's, he feels good. He's, he's, he's maintains a libido. Other guys, when they have anabolic steroid induced hypogonadism, I mean, they have no testosterone or lower levels and their brains are changed. And this is what all our research is really looking at now, what happens and how they feel terrible. So then what do you, what's the fix? Give them testosterone again. Ah, oh, they feel better. So this is not testosterone. This is a Nor-19 drug. It's, it's, it's all kind of, kind of somewhat similar, but it's a Nor-19 drug. And it, it, but it, in the brain, for most men, when they add it, and it's true, Decadic is, is a real thing. It didn't come out of nowhere. And, and we don't need to, you know, by itself or with testosterone. I mean, with testosterone, does it worsen the effects of testosterone and estrogenic? It, it makes testosterone more, more estrogenic. I love all these theories because they could be true. Mm -hmm. It's not progestonic by itself. That's not true. There's no data for it. But then if you take it with testosterone, you get progesterone. There's no one. And when I check progesterone levels, I see it elevated randomly on guys just on TRT or just any steroid. I mean, so that this Nor 19 thing is in the ground. There's no we have no we're, we're just making it all up. We don't I, I'm not saying it's not true, yeah. but I'm saying but in the end, the, the, there is an androgen inherent to this one drug that's making the brain feel good. What is it? It's the it, it's nandrolone. You know, nandrolone is the base, right? And they just, they, 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 they just, they, the way it's pr presented in like the esters, they just piggyback and change the structure so it can be administered in your muscle. Nandrolone is the drug. Yeah. And then that's the base drug and it's Nor-19. And then it converts in the system, not in the muscles to dihydro in your, in your endothelial, in your circulation, which gets into the brain. And God knows what the brain does with it. We don't know this stuff yet. I have some pH. I have some really smart guys in the world that are mammalian physiology guys constantly contacting me and we're, I'm going to end up hiring a researcher soon to write with me and do stuff. We got so much exciting stuff going on. And these guys are postulating, they, 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 these are mammalian, you know, these are studies on mammals with or mon monkeys and rats 
a lot of studies with DECA. They've done a lot of work with DECA mm -hmm. over the last 50 years. So it's kind of coming out. And th there is an androgen, it's d dihydronandolone, and there's other metabolites that are getting caught and, and are registering on the, the lab. So the guy's right. The la It's probably not free testosterone. It's another androgen that's so similar and it's registering on that. So, okay, so we answer that. But then, and that that androgen looks so similar to, to free testosterone. And it's also, it's, it's also working in the guy's brain. Yeah. We did it. Yeah, because the answer. You, know, you said that if this gentleman's uh, free testosterone is in fact negligible, like his total is, there's something, some metabolite, something that's acting the same way. Because as you say, he's he's not depressed yes, and tired. Exactly. He's got a libido. He's you know, common he's, sense. Common. But but the thing is, how many men? See, here's what you have to do. And I don't. We're not doing the study next week. You have to take a hundred men, ten men. You have to clean them up, give them all nandolone. They can't have any other diseases or steroids. And then, how exciting, you draw the blood and then run all these assays. It's going to be apple to apple, right? The same assay, liquid chromatography, dilution. I got it, guys. I, I've been doing this a long time. So you do that. The same assays are tight. And then how amazing would it be to see what what's the breakdown of looking at the free testosterone, how many look like that? And how many look low? Most guys on uh, when I look at guys on Deca in the past, they're they're free is in the tank with the total. But mm. this is one of the first ones. But how many men come in j just on Deca only? I mean, this is the ver this is the si this is why science. Why this is why the bro science guys guys you gotta you, you gotta agree that we need to have legitimate science. We're moving to the point where the big guys now in the world, real scientists, are working with me. Obviously, I don't want to say the names. Because this is just too big not to – why would you leave it in the streets? we got to get this stuff out of the streets. People are on steroids. we got to figure it out. So this is a huge piece. Can you use – I presented the paper. I presented that paper. Those are expert doctors. They, they're considering why, you, why wouldn't you, we use Nandalone as, as, as replacement, uh, replacement therapy, HRT. You're right, yeah. TRT, HRT, because – Less, less effect because it, it doesn't aromatize. It doesn't have DHT conversion scalp. It supposedly the puffiness, but everyone knows if you take DECA, you get a fucking pumpkin head. So, yes. I mean, <laughs> am I right or wrong, though? Oh, you're right. Now, look at my pumpkin head. But, uh, but you're not on DECA. Are you on DECA? I haven't been for a few weeks now, no. But but, uh, but that's with testosterone, doc. Absolutely, absolutely. But, but see, so, but but so we there's there's this is there's no science. We're completely this bro science stuff, which I do love you guys. It's chaotic. There's no we're, the, the scientists are starting to look at this and going, OK, if we need to do real human studies, we need to make it very scientific. We got to load the guys up. We got to load them in. I don't mean load them up. We have to get them in, recruit them. There has to be IRB. And, and there's you know, there's been doctors that have been doing this stuff, but just it pales compared to any other research. And, and how many people are walking around you know, the streets doing some weird kind of a thing where no one really knows about some some weird esoteric? How many guys are walking around the streets taking steroids and we haven't done anything on these uh, on this? Mm. That's freaking. Isn't that kind of peculiar to you? Yeah. yeah. Look, what, what, we, what, we, what was the number we came up with one time? It was like a million. There's something five like percent of the world's population. Wow. So I, we have eight, 8 billion human beings on this, uh, seven or 8 billion people. That's a lot of, that's a lot of steroid users. So um, in, in America, the numbers are probably up to about 20 million right now. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're a wealthy country. We have access to underground drugs, prescription drugs, of course. Uh, bro science, this is a great transition because there was a comment. The most intriguing comment on your uh, video was from a gentleman. And sir, please forgive me. I do not know how to pronounce your first name. It's probably something like Tyan or Tayan. It's T A E I A N Clark. Clark's easy enough. Uh, so he before he uh, he provided a link and he says I am the guy that has brought Deca use as a 
base of cycles and some TRT back into fashion as of late. Have multiple clients on DECA HRT under the doctor's supervision and a plethora of data on it from old doctors of 60s, 70s, not, and even later. That's not, that's, that's not my supervision. That's some other doctors, right? Yeah. yeah. With HIV AIDS as HRT standalone and the science of receptor binding, why any androgen can be used in place of test, any androgen. So he provided a link to an article that he wrote, uh, and I'm going to bore you and, make, and read the whole thing. Now, <laughs> I want you to either hold up your hand or say stop anytime you want to comment. Fair enough? Because it's a long, it's a long I'm not going to wait to the end of it, because well, then, good, good Lord. Okay, so his article is called Decabase Cycle, No Testosterone, No Sides. Decabase Cycle, what is it and why does it matter? Many have seen my video with Enhanced Athlete and were curious about more information on this topic. Well, here it is. Oh, wait a minute, Enhanced Athlete, isn't that Dr. Hone, Tony Huge? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. This, maybe this, this gentleman must be a, uh, an associate of uh, Dr. Tony Huge, I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. I forgive you, sir, if I don't I don't keep up with everyone's videos. I'm sorry. So why is the DECA base cycle better than testosterone base? Well, for one, it brings an alternative to a hormone replacement base in a steroid cycle, as it has been used for androgen deficiency studies in males and has been used as such solo without testosterone in HIV AIDS males for this very purpose. Why is DECA used over test? Well, because simply it provided better benefits, muscle growth, fewer side effects, and reports of better quality of life. Doc, true, false? There's just there's 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 no conclusive data for that. It's all anecdotal data, and I saw I've looked at the research on this, and I, the one he talked about that I provided that that paper. I think yeah. it was 2016. It wasn't that long ago, and um, it, it 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 postulates some of these things. It doesn't prove it. This guy is not a side. I'm sorry, sir. If you're going to be in this world with me, you better put up the boxing gloves because. If in the world of science, reproducibility and statistical evaluation, you better understand what this is when you're making all these claims. All right, let's continue. Majority of guys fear anabolics due to the side effects such as hair loss, gynecomastia, water retention, acne, acne scars, and even the emotional sides. So they search for safer alternatives a lot of the times, which usually doesn't end up bringing the results either. DECA, simply put from real world results, such as from bodybuilders from the 60s to late 80s, Mike Mentzer, Robbie Robinson, Danny Padilla, and countless more, many great names, as well from studies shows us how little the sides from it truly are in regards to the aforementioned sides above. Hair loss, gynecomastia, acne. You just did not see it back then. Hair loss, science-wise, near impossible unless very high doses. Real-world results-wise, I have only had guys regrow hair on DECA. Oh, really? And some that have run upwards three gram range due to their choice. That's a lot of fucking DECA, dude. Three grams. Okay, gynecomastia, science-wise. Gynecomastia is due to an off-androgen to estrogen ratio. And DECA, science-wise, simply put, is always in a very favorable ratio. Real-world results-wise, I've never seen it happen, even with guys that were prone to gyno, off less than 100 milligrams of testosterone. Yet, could use, again, multiple grams of DECA with zero estrogenic symptoms. The only times I've seen this happen was with guys using shady sources where I got them to test their product in lab work to reveal they had testosterone, not DECA, in their product, which surprisingly happens semi-often. Uh, okay, shall I keep going? Acne, real-world results and science-wise, we just do not see it happen. Nothing more to be said here. Water retention? Ah. A study showed there was no fluid increase on this drug, and bodybuilders in the 60s to late 80s used this drug as a contest prep as well, and so have my followers and clients. It is a very lean drug, and many would compare it to a weaker trend. Dr. Robert Kerr, who treated many bodybuilders in the 70s, 80s, also reports this to be a dry drug with no water retention and is a great contest prep drug. Let me say something about that. So the, the era that he's talking about, 60s to the late 80s, um, they weren't that lean. They started Conditions started becoming a lot better in the 80s, sure, but certainly in the 60s and 70s, if you look at these guys, to my to my eye, those physiques, they were holding water. They were holding substantial water. Wow. Uh, the condition, you know, because I've covered a million amateur and pro bodybuilding contests. Probably not a million. But I, I know what water retention looks like and what's body fat and what's water. And they definitely were retaining a certain amount of water. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to argue with that one. DECA shuts your testosterone down? Of course it does. All steroids do. What matters is we replace this drug with an androgen that can support our male functions. Dianabol, DECA. 
nandrolone, equipoise all fit that bill. The big reason being here is they're all androgens that also convert to estrogen, which is needed for androgens to even work on the estrogen receptor, period. This is why DHT drugs will not work as a base. Studies show without estrogen, DHT drugs solo can make animals very timid and loss of sex drive, gain body fat, and insulin resistance, and even digestion goes down the drain due to estrogen being needed for pancreatic function on enzymes for digestion. Prolactin? Well, zero studies have ever shown DECA to ever raise prolactin. Not a single one ever. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had your hand up there. <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, I'm just letting you go. I mean, I'm just going to comment in the end, but I mean, this okay. is like, there's, this is, none of this stuff is true, though. And guys, please come out. People, science guys, real science guys, were the studies, but I mean, I just don't, you can't globalize all this kind of stuff, but I'm going to leave it to the end. Yeah, yeah. And the only study showing us this shows it lowered prolactin compared to testosterone raising it. So DECA lowers prolactin. Libido loss, never been heard of by any old pro bodybuilder when this was a staple That's as a base without testosterone. Nor has a single report ever been report recorded by the World Health Organization either, unlike testosterone. The issue here is when testosterone use became popular and added to the mix. DECA simply put will make the side effect galore drug testosterone even worse. Helping aromatization of testosterone to estrogen and receptor sensitivity, making testosterone an even worse drug, leading to more sides such as libido loss. Again, not a single study on DECA used solo has ever reported it causing any sort of libido loss and has been used many times solo. Conclusion, why use testosterone? Why, when so many get sides off even 100 milligrams of testosterone, gynecomastia, bloating, acne, hair loss, for what? It isn't needed to replace male function, seminal vessel health, prostate health, etc. DECA can do this and better at it for what we're doing here. We're not using anabolics for just a replacement effect. And if you are, then this topic isn't for you and no need to consider anything but your TRT. When a bodybuilder or someone looking for an anabolic effect, we're looking at using something that is above normal ranges for a purpose. And that purpose mainly is anabolism. Go and run 500 milligrams of testosterone and your estrogen goes five times normal range. DHT, prolactin also all, go, all, all also goes up, leading to all our lovely sides that we now need to run anti-aromatase drugs at high doses, which worsen heart, bone health, and cause hair loss by themselves. Yet, when we go and run 500 milligrams of an anabolic drug like DECA, we now have the effect we want, a high dose of anabolism. Yet our secondary hormone profiles are at a normal dose range, similar to that using a TRT dose base of testosterone. Can one, can one run a base, a test base, say 100 milligrams, with an anabolic like DECA as your main drug, such as 100 milligrams testosterone with 500 milligrams plus of DECA? Sure, but I'm sure many of you have read online and have experienced for yourself, countless users get side effects, even off just 100 milligrams of testosterone. Then this might not be the option for you when DECA can replace all of your needs without the side effects. Simply put, there's no need for testosterone or testosterone in high doses. I'm done. Go ahead, Doc. You're incredible. You're that's a that's a great read. I, I how come no one does it though? How come no one and people do do it? First of all, like I'm not against this, sir. I'm not against it. I, I, I have had so many guys. I'm the anabolic doc. I've seen thousands and thousands of guys in every day more. So I've heard men come in. This is anecdotal, but they're not you know, they're just telling me, Doc, you know, I went on, what'd you do? Tell me the steroids, sir, and I'm writing them down. You know, I did DECA by, and I, 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 I've always asked, like DECA by itself or with test. I, I've heard many times, if not thousands of times, oh, DECA by itself, who that caused DECA dick. Now, wait, wait, is the guy bullshitting me? Why would he come in to bullshit me? Is it, was it really DECA? I, this is stuff, again, this is just like useless because I, we assume it's DECA, but then, no, I have a better drug dealer than you. My, all my drugs I buy, all my Anivar is real, not Dianabol. It's like, but then we can get back into this again. We have no, that's why making direct claims without randomized, double-blinded, very good trials, no one can, I can't make claims, no one can make claims. So we're, we have to go back to anecdotal stories and anecdotal case studies and guys saying this and just decadrobolin by itself if you just really really use it completely by itself all the time would that actually work would there be that's what i'm wondering and i i'm all for it if it really does work and the and the other and doctors and my peers agree that because he he left out the prostate actually which i'm supporting the guy you know because of DHN and the conversion, not DHT, 
it could it be but that article i think he's talking to that i actually i referenced i showcased the article yeah. that they they were they were non-conclusive they were just thinking it could be better because of the side effects of testosterone are hair loss acne puffiness gynecomastia and the prostate again everyone's leaving out the goddamn heart because i'm an internist i have to think about the heart <laughs> so who cares about the heart so okay. but i mean when i look at all that stuff though it, 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 imagine 20 30 years from now or 10 years from now well this, let me ask you i mean because now everyone's I, I know i should remember this but is is deca worse for your heart than testosterone I uh, see. We don't. I, I now who the hell knows if it's anabolic. It the, does. Does the myocardial tissue uptake the enzyme for dihydronidolone? Boom! Right there. Could someone tell me? Skeletal muscle doesn't have it. S the, the the endothelial circulation does. That's all throughout your body. That's why you get all this crazy shit. Glandular tissue has it. Follicular tissue in the scalp has it. It does. Does is the skeletal muscle. And the myocardial tissue free of DHN, uh, con excuse me, of the enzyme that converts nandolone to dihydronandolone, which is a weaker, it, it's a weaker, it's weaker androgen than DHT. And that's what this guy is, this is what his whole thing is based on. Yeah. So, and then there's so many other uh, con confounding metabolites. This is like, I talk to PhD guys in China about this stuff. You know, about on the emails and stuff. And I've, they're a genius guy. This is all mammal stuff. So no one's brought this to that level. And what would it do to the heart? Remember that left, remember the LVH stuff that, you know, what, one of the colleagues, you know, the guy that works up there at Harvard, Bagish, Dr. Aaron Bagish, I have, I have like three patients with him now. Mm. He, he's, he's done studies that steroid users, just steroid users, he doesn't break down what steroids have increase in LVH thickness of the heart, and then it's pathologic with lower systolic ejection fraction and then even and diastolic, and they have heart failure. So he and that's not wrong. It's true, not for everyone, but for men that are susceptible. So if you're using nandrolone and it's more, it is more anabolic. I get yeah. that. I, I that's why he wants this to happen because it's more. It's going to be TRT, but you're going to have better muscles because it's. It's more anabolic than testosterone. Oh, my God. We, we kind of keep going in the circle, but at least as long as you understand what I'm saying, we just have no idea. It's how much risk do you want to take? I think for this day and age, stay on testosterone, keep doses as low as you can, watch, watch all the side effects that I do and stuff and block the, block the side effects so you could, like you, you're blocking some of the adverse effects of the cholesterol, you believe me. Thank God your doctor agreed. Yeah. And you're going to hopefully, with God's good grace and the good universe and the polar bears, you're going to go forward and <laughs> I do this stuff for your faith. I do it for you. I say it's for you, Ron. You're going to go forward. And it's just like, I mean, I don't understand why we're not doing studies on it. No one cares. Well, well let me ask you, though, you know, you know, t because TRT is so widespread now. I mean, I don't know. Huge. An actual, it's huge. I mean, every I'm sure every year now, the percentage of men over 40 on TRT is going up and it's up. It's exploding. So if indeed DECA was a lot safer and had a lot less, a fewer side effects, yeah. why wouldn't why wouldn't it start coming into use more so, so far, than testosterone? Maybe in 20 years, I'm telling you. So this is, you know, the medical community and our community at large is slow moving, right? Yeah. It's a slow moving vehicle. So- it would be interesting to see if Nandalone and they blow the dust. You know, if you look at science, right? Uh, 400 years ago, someone, someone discovered, I, I don't know, a telegraph or, and then it was put down and he, you know, the world is flat, the world's round, you know, then it goes, it goes in, it goes lost. And if you look for, if you're the history of science, you'll see like a hundred years on some stuff. Hmm. So like, is it possible that Nandalone derivatives and other drugs and, that we already have and know from the 50s and 60s that we know, can those turn out to be better than TRT? And I don't, oh my God, I mean, I would love to, I would hope it would be, that would be awesome. Everyone would be a little bit more jacked and you'd, you'd have great sex, you wouldn't lose your hair, no bitch tits, your prostate's gonna not blow up and be, you're not gonna get prostate cancer or benign prostatic hyperplasia and your prostate's gonna swell up and you're going to be not pissing. And that's that's not pretty as you get older, I can tell you that. So, and then 
do you feel and then everyone's going to be on a little bit of DECA the whole thing turns over in the next 20 years everyone's on a little bit of DECA but what about women that are on I've had a count enough women that I've known come in and they've done DECA and boy they get strong and they like it but they get puffy why are they puffy on it they're not taking testosterone they're just taking DECA oh it's not DECA it wasn't DECA it was some, they were taking testosterone well then let's go right back to the goddamn streets again because we have no idea what we're even taking and getting because we right am i right or wrong yeah but you know what as far as counterfeit drugs and obviously there's no way to know what's kind of what's counterfeit and what's not unless you do the the william llewellyn roid test kit but if you're gonna if you're a drug dealer and you're producing if you're trying to pass something off as something that's more expensive deca isn't much more expensive than testosterone it it wouldn't make any sense i you know if you could sell, you could pass off testosterone as primaball, and you could pass off Dianabol as Anivar. That those are great profit margins. Wow. There's not much profit margin to be made for drug dealers, e- even at the larger scale, to pass off uh, testosterone as Deca. I, I think Deca. I think Deca's Deca. I mean, the the the, ex, the guru guys that I know and talk to, Deca's mainly Deca. It just is. And then so therefore, the women that have used Deca and they get puffy on it. Oh, they, they love it, though, because they get strong and they feel good. I'm not sure about the deck of dick for them and the sex drive. I just I just don't know. I don't. But I, I they, they get <laughs> some of them do have little, you know, their clitoris gets, you know, how do women get deck of dick? Oh, yeah, that's a whole other talk. I mean, <laughs> but I mean, it did I, their heads. I mean, I've had women tell me that they, they get puffy on it. So this there's this guy's like, but they have estrogen because they're women. This is, it really is, this is a great talk. I mean, I just don't know. I can tell you, I can give a little anecdotal personal experience. When I'm on, I could use the same amount, milligram-wise, per week of test and DECA combined. When I drop the TECA, DECA, when I drop the DECA out and just bring up the test a little bit so the amount is the same, I immediately lose generally three or four pounds, and it's pure water. I can tell because I look leaner, even though I'm not any leaner. It's just I shed some water. So that that tells me the DECA definitely makes me retain some water, and my joints do feel better when I'm on it, which, you know. I mean, you, 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 you talk to, you're, the, you're Ron Harris. You right. talk to pro bodybuilders. Do pro bodybuilders run that much DECA Durablin be, three months before the show? No. DECA is an off-season. DECA is... Yeah. Deck is something you don't see in contest prep cycles. You know they'll, they'll switch over to things like Winstrol, Masteron, Prima Bolin. The test is usually still a base, but uh, Deca very rarely is part. You know, in the seventies and eighties, sure, because they they weren't using the wide variety. And they did look, you're right, though. They they did look kind of like they looked phenomenal, but great muscles, but they weren't cut to the bone at all. No, they weren't. You know, they often had a, a, a fuller look sometimes, but it was water retention. They were, wow. they were, they were retaining water. So, so sir, uh, I hope he doesn't get angry. And why am I always worried? Why do I care? <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, I you and I it, worry. Ron, we it, worry. We're, we're it's worried. all, it's all anecdotal, everything. I mean, he didn't we have, worry. we want people to like us. Yeah. But, you know, he might, a lot of the things that he's stating, you know, categorically are true. They may or may not be. There's they just, are. There's no, there's no studies to back it up. It's he's, That's, he's there's no studies when he when he everything is got Clark. What you know who this guy T- Tianan is? We can't pronounce. You know whatever you're saying is like and okay I, we get it, but there's no conclusive studies and the anecdote the anecdotal stuff goes against it. Yeah. So and, that, you know, that's a lot of what he, a lot of what he said might be borne out by studies that have true. yet to be done. But they and, haven't and been done guy, yet. And this is guys to defend the guy. You guys are talking about bodybuilders, and he said, "Don't combine it with any bit of testosterone, not to mention any other drugs." This is completely sole use, deca for deca, only deca, never with anything else. So if you even touch it with testosterone, you're going to wreck it. I get that, and I, I didn't think about that until you read that, and that that makes sense, and that's. So it's it's got to be pure DECA only, only DECA, and you got to wait. You got to what if you take DECA and you start getting DECA dick within the first month or weeks? Stay with it, man. Stay with it, man. Who's gonna stay with it? <laughs> it'll get better. It'll it'll get better. Your cock yeah. may get better, sir. Stay. Take more DECA. Take three grams of DECA. 
wow, that's a lot of DECA. I just can't believe it. I've heard of, I've heard of three grams of trend a week. Now that's scary. Wow. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Well, doctor. Wow. We've done it again. <laughs> no, another, another good one. Another good one. Thank you, doc, for letting me steal a great topic once again, but you know, we, we, you don't get a chance in your videos to go through any of the comments for the video. So I, I, I think this was a, this was actually a really good opportunity. Love it. Cool. Well, when I get everyone again to take a look at this book, America on Steroids, A Time to Heal. You can get that on Amazon.com or the website, testosteronology.com. And if you're looking to contact a doctor, get a consultation, doesn't matter where you are in this great globe of ours. It could be over in Kuwait, South Africa, Australia, Shanghai. Doctor does Skype, FaceTime, Zoom, all that good stuff. You can contact him on the website and you too could become a patient of the great Dr. Tom, Thomas O'Connor. Thank you so much, Ron. Tom, thank you for everything. You know, this is, uh, you're doing God's work for men. Not the, it's it's a not fun, that it's, <laughs> it, We're having a great time, Ron. But thank you, Steve Blackman. Ron, you guys kicking ass. Keep moving, man. Let's go. Cool. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Ask the Anabog Doc. We'll see you next time.